Hey guys, Tabs McCaffrey from the Urban Goddess Shop. What's up? Today I got a video. This is our What's Sold, and this is for March 1st to 7th. We had a meh week, but I kind of want to jump into these sales. So if you're new to our channel, I am a Canadian reseller and I sell on Poshmark, eBay, Etsy and Depop and you can follow us on any of those platforms come check out what we have to sell but our main jam like our main focus is Poshmark that's where we make the majority of our money this last week we had $764 in sales which is still good not quite where we've been lately but here's the thing it was the first week of the month. I don't know about you guys let me know in the comments but first week of the month always sucks for us like sucks and I'm now seeing the pattern. We've been doing this for approximately eight months. We've been on this reselling journey with Poshmark since June, 2020. There is a trend. First week of the month, sales are like, <sighs> but I don't sweat it. I usually take this time to list more items and get my closet ready for the strong weeks of the month. In total on Poshmark, $764. We had zero sales on every other platform, which is sad, but I truthfully haven't been putting much focus into those areas. It is what it is. If you haven't checked out our last What's Sold video, I'm gonna pop this up here. We had some fantastic sales. This was for last week. Make sure you check it out. For this week, sent out a total of 23 packages and for a total of 41 items, which is still quite a few items to be sending out. Our average sale price was $18.63. That's not fantastic. Uh, definitely not where I want to be, but I feel like sometimes on these slow weeks, I send out a lot of really low offers just to get the sales strumming, just to get, you know, our closet showing up in the algorithm, things like that. It is what it is some weeks, right? It is what it is. So the highest sale that we had for last week was a Lululemon Bliss dress. This was in a size eight. I had it listed at $65, but it kind of fell into a bundle. So I'm going to cover that later on. I don't think I actually sold it for $65 but the list price was for that. So therefore it was our highest valued item that we sold. Let's roll into this. I love going through these. I love showing you guys all the pictures, things that are selling. And it just gives you an idea of what moves. And if you're out thrifting, maybe these are things that you're passing over that you could be grabbing. You know what? In our books, profit is profit, whether it's four bucks or 20 bucks, doesn't matter to me as long as we're making money. The first bundle, this sold on March 1st. It was for $80. There was a Tommy Hilfiger Herpet Herbert zip jacket in a large. This was actually new with tags found at the bins. Such a score. There was also an American Eagle blue and black plaid classic fit long sleeve shirt in a large. Navy puffy long sleeve jacket in a large. There was no name on this. It was like there was no tags. I don't feel like it was a brand. I'm not sure where it came from. So I was happy with a couple bucks profit on that. A pair of Kate and Mel leather ankle booties in gray in a size 37. I had grabbed these at the bins. I don't know if I normally would have picked these ones up if I was paying five or six dollars for them. And they did not do very well in our closet. And the last item of this bundle was a vintage Helly Hansen quarter zip sweatshirt in a medium. Pretty sure I grabbed this at Value Village when they had the 50% off coupon for activewear. I'm confident I paid somewhere around three dollars for the item. Still pretty good. I'm happy with this bundle. Overall, the earnings were $59.75 and maybe have $10 in inventory costs here. That is a good flip in my books. Next up was a single sale. This was for March 1st as well. It was for $19 and it was a She Native graphic off the shoulder sweatshirt. I've had this for a couple months, just kind of sat in there, knew it was just waiting for the right person to come along. Hadn't heard of the brand before, but they definitely have cute stuff and decent comps when I searched them up. Next day, so this is for Tuesday, March 2nd, we had another bundle sale. This was a Columbia Men's Camouflage Sherpa outdoors vest. I had this listed at $35. A Skidoo men's winter snowmobile jacket in an extra large and a Wind River Sherpa fleece zip up vest in a large. All three of these items, actually the top two, so the Columbia and the Skidoo jacket, I had grabbed in a bins haul, which was a total score. And the Wind River Sherpa fleece I had thrifted. Our earnings on this was $47 minus our inventory costs, which might've been somewhere around eight, $9. We had some really great bundles this week. Same day, another bundle. This was for $80. This included that Lululemon white and gray bliss dress in a size eight. I had this listed at $65. There was also an American Eagle gauze tank top in a color taupe in an extra small. I've had this since summer. Oh my gosh. Sometimes I don't know. When I first started, I was like, ooh, American Eagle, because I know when I go to the mall, American Eagle, like for a tank top can be $40. 
They don't resell really well though. Actually, let me correct that. They resell well, just not for a high profit. The third item in this bundle was a new collection teal lace layered boho dress. I had never seen this. I'm not even sure where they sell this. If you know, you can let me know in the comments because it's just yeah, I had no idea. I didn't find it when I searched it, but it definitely had a unique style. I knew that there was a demographic of people that would enjoy this. And it had that like boho kind of festival, vintage Southwestern feel. Can I use all those key words together? I feel like I can. I do in my listings <laughs> anyways. And yeah, 80 bucks for this bundle. So my earnings were $59.81. Those were three great pieces. I like them. I like to see them move. An old piece and a new piece. And another piece all gone out of my inventory next bundle same day march 2nd on the tuesday this was for 41 dollars, and it was a billabong plaid hooded flannel in a size extra large and a north face gray hoodie sweater in a large both of these items were had just been listed within a week or two so sold really quick and i was happy with that one next was another single sale so this wasn't until march 4th i did have a day the wednesday of last week where i had zero sales, but I really try and push to not have many of those. The next day was for Thursday, and this was a Simply Noel cold shoulder blouse in an XL. It sold for $14. I did use a stock photo for the white because I find with these cold shoulder tops, I don't know if you guys have luck with them, but they just don't photograph well. Like they just don't show how beautiful the garment is. I definitely threw in a stock photo and then made sure to put it kind of in the description that this was a pink top and all the other pictures were for pink. That is my workaround. Same day Thursday, this was a Dreamer Chanel knit orange sweater in a size medium large. It sold for $14. I actually sent out an offer to like her on this sweater, so she got a $3 shipping discount. My earnings were $6.70. This came from a bins trip. Really, I still made you know, around five bucks. Bo Barra left me a comment. That's kind of a different spelling, but I like it. Uh, she said, gorgeous and well packaged. Love this seller. Oh, thanks girl. That is awesome. I'm happy you love it. It is such a cute sweater. I I knew that it was going to move through our closet because of the color and the texture and everything. Anyways, whatever. It's beautiful. I'm happy you got it and you're happy with it. Next up was another bundle. This is still for Thursday. It sold for $35. There was a Tommy Hilfiger beige tan cable knit v-neck sweater in an XL and a North Face pink graphic sweater in a small. This was a fantastic deal on both of these items, but you know your girl, I don't like to sit on items. She put them together. I sent her a fantastic offer and she accepted. Both items came from the bins. If you don't shop at the bins, so what the bins are is Goodwill, Outlet, and I think maybe other thrift stores do similar things, but Goodwill is known for this. So they have an outlet called the bins. You pay by the pound, you sort through bins and load up your cart. This is a great way to get low cost of goods. 90% of our inventory probably comes from the bins. And this is like my bread and butter things, things that go in the closet. They're usually not high cost items. I then do thrifting locally to supplement those higher priced items, those more brand names or bolo items, I guess you could say. A lot of the items, I get at the bins, I'm able to kind of barter with people and I have some room to move. Not all items do those. I do try and pick and choose what I do for deals. Okay, let's keep this rolling. Next item up, this was the same day. It was a vintage Clio print or a vintage Clio floral print vest in a grandma. <laughs> I just threw in a random word grandma uh, medium because this is like that grandma core style. I love it. I personally don't wear these vests, but I think they look so adorable on girls. And uh, yeah, she got it with a $3 shipping discount and my earnings were $13.44 and she received it. Excellent. Five stars. I like those. I, I don't even know how you could give less than five stars on an item because it is so stinking cute. I, I think I'd be disappointed if I got less than five stars on that one. Uh, next up was another bundle. This was for Friday, March 5th. It was a three-piece bundle. There was a vintage Wind River tie-dyed hoodie sweater in a medium, a Stanley Gray plaid flannel button down top and a large and a vintage leather woven belt. She got an offer from me for $52. She also got a $3 shipping discount. The cool thing is that vintage Wind River tie-dyed hoodie. I actually had like a whole pile of things sitting in our spare tub or like our spare bathroom tub that had to be tie-dyed and I did a big batch of them last week. Like 
I did a lot of things. I feel like I did almost like 15 items. This fell into it. It was such a cool item. I love the way green tie dyes. I don't know why. And they, it just looks gorgeous and they always sell super quick. So I'm, I'm on the hunt for these nice green uh, sweaters and shirts and stuff. We agreed on a price of $52 and that is still out waiting to be delivered. Next item, this is the same day. There was a Harley Davidson charcoal gray hoodie sweater in a large. This sold for $30. I was happy with that price. I don't know, like Harley Davidson's kind of up and down and I think it varies on styles. I don't have a lot of knowledge in Harley Davidson, but this sold pretty good for me and I'm happy happy with that sale. Next up was another bundle. This sold for $41. This is also for Friday. Friday was like a great sales day, which was awesome because we were actually leaving for a snowboard trip and we were going to be gone for a couple days. So I really try and like strum out these sales on Friday so that I'm not kind of stressing over the weekend, um, sharing the closet, you know, trying to actively make sales happen and reach our benchmarks. This was another bundle for $41 and this went to Commune Vintage. It was an Under Armour teal hooded sweater in a medium, a Reborn J gray white striped long cardigan in a large, and an Ari gray oversized knit long sleeve top in a large. All three of these under <laughs> all three of these items I had just kind of listed in the last month, so they went pretty quick. I didn't realize the Under Armour teal hoodie had gone down to $14 because I definitely think they're valued more than that but it is what it is sometimes I just drop prices and with all the items in the closet I kind of lose track of what they are so if you're looking for a good deal like comb through my closet you just might find something that has slipped through my grasp and is at a low price uh next bundle again this was for friday it was a vintage black graphic band tee in a size large and a vintage avon yeah you heard me right Avon blue slip dress lingerie in a medium. This was so cute and so gorgeous. I'm pretty sure this slip dress was somewhere from in the 90s. You could kind of tell by the tag. Yeah, it was just such a cute bundle. She got it for $32. I was happy with that. For some reason, actually, I'm going to talk about this. The item, like I dropped it off. Oh my gosh. I guess it sold on Monday. So I would have dropped it or sold last Friday, I would have dropped it off Monday morning. I don't know why, but it didn't scan. And I have this happen probably once or twice a week out of all of our packages. If this happens and Poshmark emails you and they're like, hey, don't forget to ship the item, please let us know. You can go into the options on your phone and you go to shipment, you go to problems. And on there, you can say dropped off shipment, not scanned. Make sure you click that hit submit so Poshmark knows that you have dropped this off and that it just didn't scan. I just dealt with that today. I didn't realize that it hadn't scanned until they emailed me today, which kind of makes me sad because usually I try and catch those things within two days, but it is what it is. I promise Megan it was dropped off on Monday morning and I'm hoping it just like shows up on your doorstep. Okay. So, couple more sales. This was for Saturday. It was a pair of Ugg Tan Bailey Button Triple Shearling Boots. These were in a size four. They sold for $35, so this would be youth sizing. These actually had some staining, and I'm gonna do a video coming up real soon on how to treat Ugg boots with staining because I have found an amazing way to get out staining and practically make the boots new. So stay tuned. I'm gonna have to find like the ugliest stained up pair of Ugg boots to do this video with, but I'm gonna give you guys this hack because it works. This is also for Saturday. It was a Calvin Klein pink sleeveless top in a medium. This sold for $15. This was another bins find. I kind of just threw it in. I thought it would go in on a bundle, but she just bought it on its own. Uh, there was another bundle. This was on Saturday as well. It was an L.L. Bean green fleece quarter snap sweater in an extra large and a reverse tie-dyed turtleneck sweatshirt in a medium. This sold for $46. That L.L. Bean, I don't normally find it, but man, are they fantastic quality and they usually do really well. I never have issues selling L.L. Bean, so if you see it out in the wild, try and grab it. You'll definitely make some profit on it. I mean, make sure the cost of goods is low. I picked this up at our local thrift shop and I had a 50% off coupon. Paid somewhere around three or four dollars with the coupon. That was great, so yeah. I'm happy with that. I love sharing with you guys when I thrift and how I get them, what my cost of goods are. I don't keep track of it 
in any spreadsheet. It's hard for me, but I, I usually remember generally how I found an item. The rest of these orders are all for Sunday. So the first one was a Desinguel. I'm not sure if that's how you say it. It was a pink shift asymmetrical dress in a medium. This sold for $15. These are actually worth, I want to say like somewhere around $150, but they just don't really resell that much. I think the brand is you know a little bit older but it definitely has like that quirky style to it next up was another single sale this was a cream sweater dress long sleeve and an xl it sold for 17 dollars. i just lift listed this a couple days prior there was no tag in it so i had no idea what the brand was i just kind of stated that in the listing it was super cute it'd be very cozy for like lounging around the house right now i would like it i'd wear it totally next item up was a dc reverse tie-dyed orange hoodie sweater this sold for 20 dollars this actually came from my personal closet and I was happy with that. It was a really great deal. And actually funny story, I had a similar sweater to this that was a Burton sweater and I actually listed this as a Burton sweater originally. And I had someone comment and say, LOL, I'm pretty sure this is a DC one. And I looked it over, I was like, oh my gosh, I can't believe I missed that. So I changed the listing. I kind of created a bundle with that girl's name in it and uh, just sent her a comment and said, oh my gosh, thanks for the catch, totally changed it, my bad. Yeah, sometimes you make mistakes. If you feel that you have misentered the information on a listing, you can change the brand name up to three times. Now, there are two reasons why I would do this. One is I make a mistake, I accidentally list it as a different brand. Or number two, sometimes I'll have it as the specific brand on the tag, and then I learn maybe it's from Revolve or Aritzia or whatever, I will actually change it to like Aritzia, for example, because I find more people search by Aritzia than they do by Wilfred. And also with the parties, I feel like there's more Aritzia parties than there is Wilfred parties. So just my little tip on how to categorize your items. Next item up was a vintage Jordache light denim button down shirt in extra large. This sold for $18. That was a quick flip, had just listed it a couple days before. There was another bundle, it was for $37. This was a pair of Northern Reflections green mom jeans in a size 10, a pair of beige linen wide leg pants in a size 10, and a green waffle knit thermal v-neck top in a small. This is a really good deal for all three of these items because I originally had them all listed quite higher. I did closet clear out on Friday and then I actually left the prices over Saturday. So these were still my closet clear out prices. Typically after closet clear out, I usually mark the items back up to whatever the original price is and then I'll mark them down again when there's another closet clear out. I know it sounds like a lot of work, but it works and I get all these sales. So I don't know, for me, I'm okay working if it equates to making more money in our closet. And it seems to work for us. So if you haven't tried it, try doing it, do some closet clear out. Maybe you do a bunch of items that have been recently liked, drop them down for that day. And then the next day, put them up. And if you sell a few things on closet clear out, great. And then you can put them back up to that price. And if you sell it at full price the next day, it's a win-win. So it's a little bit of work, but I promise you it's worth the effort, okay? It, it truly is. This was a vintage Penman's quilted oversized coat in a 2X. It sold for $30. I had a lot of messages, like bundles built, private messages on this jacket, and I literally had listed it two days before. We were gone on the ski trip, so I actually had to have Lena, who stayed home, do some measurements and stuff for me on it because there was a lot of questions. I was happy that it sold relatively quick, and I think I'm gonna keep my eye out, out for these kind of colors and this kind of style of jacket. It definitely falls into those neutral tone kind of colors that are in style right now. And I think the oversized fit is kind of what people are looking for. It's pretty cool. And this is like the perfect trend for you to thrift. And the very last item to sell on Sunday was a soaked taupe color model short sleeve shirt in a large and it sold for $18. I do feel like these model material clothing items are worth a little bit more money. It was Sunday, I was doing closet clear out and she got a deal. All right, Nikki, I hope you love that top. It is beautiful. Something that I definitely love to pick up. All right, guys, that is it. These are the sales for the week. If you haven't seen my last video, I did a video on dealing with Poshmark cases and I'm gonna pop it up here here. If you've ever had a Poshmark case or you want to know what to expect, if you do receive one, give it a watch. Other than that, if you like reseller content and you enjoyed this video, give me a big fat thumbs up and I will see you next time. Have a fabulous week. Bye!